Hello friends, this video on neat dual nature of radiation and matter is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 14. Doubly ionized helium atoms and hydrogen ions are accelerated from rest through the same potential drop. The ratio of the final velocities of the helium and the hydrogen ions is. Okay, so in this case, the potential drops are known. In the sense that you know that the relationship between the potential drops and the final velocities need to be determined. So we know that E V naught is equal to K max, where V naught is the stopping potential. So this can further be written as E V naught is equal to half M V square. So we can write V square is equal to 2 E V naught divided by M. So that's how the final velocity and potential drop are related to each other. Now in this problem it is mentioned that the value of V0 is same for both hydrogen and helium. So it is same for both of them. So therefore we can say that V square is proportional to E, V will be proportional to root over E by M right because v square is proportional to e by m so v would be proportional to root over e by m correct so in this case we can say that v for helium divided by v for hydrogen would be equal to root over e for root over e for helium by m for helium divided by root over E for hydrogen by M for hydrogen. Now if you talk about the mass and charge for helium and hydrogen, you can say that hydrogen is 1, 1 and helium is 2, 4. Correct? So therefore you can say that mass of helium is equal to 4 times the mass of hydrogen because helium has how many uh, proton plus neutron. So mass number of helium is 4 and mass number of hydrogen is 1. Therefore mass of helium will be 4 times the mass of hydrogen. Similarly if you talk about the charge on helium it would be 2 times the charge on hydrogen because in case of hydrogen it is you just have 1 proton and 1 electron but in case of helium how many protons do you have? You have two protons and you have two electrons. So therefore, this is the relation between mass and charge of helium and hydrogen. So using this, we can write this is equal to root over E helium into mass hydrogen divided by mass helium into charge hydrogen. Now let us uh, look at the relations now. So we see that charge on helium is 2 times the charge on hydrogen. So we can write it as 2 hydrogen and this is mass of hydrogen divided by mass of helium is again 4 times the mass of hydrogen and charge on hydrogen root over. So this, this will cancel, this, this will cancel. 2, 2 is a 4. So this is equal to 1 by root over 2. So therefore, the correct option is C. Question number 15. The cathode of a photoelectric cell is changed such that the work function changes from W1 to W2 such that W2 is greater than W1. Okay. If the current before and after changes are I1 and I2, all other conditions remaining unchanged, then what is the relationship between I1 and I2? Okay, so we have two different situations here. Case 1 and case 2. So in case 1, what is the work function? It is W1. In case 2, the work function is W2. Now as the work function changes, there similarly the current also changes. So in the case 1, current is I1. In case 2, current is I2. Now we know that current is independent of the work function. Work function only decides at what point in time photoelectric effect will take place. But it has nothing to do with the amount of photoelectrons that is getting emitted. Correct? So we know that current is 
dependent only on the intensity of incident light so it, it has nothing to do with the work function of the metal so therefore there will be no change in the intensity and now here there is no change in the intensity and therefore there would be no change in the current so the correct option would be i1 is equal to i2 question number 16 a radio transmitter operates at a frequency 880 kilohertz and a power of 10 kilowatts. The number of photons emitted per second is. Okay. So here uh, we have the frequency and we also have the power. Now what is power? Power is basically energy per unit time. And how do we calculate energy? Now if we know that energy of one photon is H nu. Right now here we have n number of photons. So the energy would be n h nu. So power is n h nu divided by t. So in this question power is given as 10 kilowatts. Right now from this expression we can say that n will be equal to p into t divided by h nu. So power is given as 10 kilowatts. So you change it into watts. So 1 kilowatt is 1000 watts. So 10 into 1000 into how much is the time? So time here is per second. That means one second. This divided by h nu. h is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34. And what is nu? Nu is 880 kilohertz. So 880 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz is equal to 1000 hertz. So 880 kilohertz would be 880 into 1000 hertz. So these will get cancelled. Now once you uh, solve this mathematically, you see the value comes out to be 1.72 into 10 to the power 31. So these would be the number of photons. Question number 17. An atom absorbs a photon of wavelength 500 nanometers and emits another photon of wavelength 700 nanometers. Find the net energy absorbed by the atom in the process. So here it says that this atom absorbs some wavelength and it also emits some wavelength. So what is the net energy that is absorbed? So first let us calculate the energy that is absorbed by the atom. So energy absorbed is given by Hc by lambda. So here Hc divided by lambda would be 500 nanometers because this is the wavelength which is absorbed. So Hc divided by 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 meters. Similarly, let us calculate the energy that is released. So energy released will again be given by Hc by lambda. Here it is Hc divided by lambda would be 700 nanometers. So 700 into 10 to the power minus 9. So now if you want to calculate how much is the net energy that is absorbed in the process. Now whether net energy is absorbed or released that depends on which value is more. So looking at these two we can say that the numerator is the same. So denominator decides which is a bigger value. So looking at this we can very easily say that energy absorbed is more than energy released. So overall there is energy absorption which is taking place. So the net energy absorbed will be equal to Hc divided by 500 into 10 to the power minus 9 minus Hc divided by 700 into 10 to the power minus 9. So this is equal to Hc divided by 10 to the power minus 9 1 by 500 minus 1 by 700. So this is equal to Hc divided by 10 to the power minus 9 into 2 divided by 3500. So this value comes out to be 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So this much is the net energy that is absorbed by the atom in this process. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.